Hey, my brother, why do you have a beard? Even goats have beards. Goats have beards? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good to see you. All right, quick first question for everyone out there. How do you pronounce your last name? Is it, I don't want to say anything. Well, if you bring the T and the Z together, T and the Z together, yeah. very fast. So it's T, Z, T, Z, 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 all right, we'll leave it to you to pronounce, inshallah. Okay, now, on the topic of da'wah, what I really, really wanted to talk about is if the Prophet ﷺ was here today, how would he be giving da'wah? It's a tough question. That's a very good question, of course. I believe that the Prophet ﷺ, if he was alive today, his da'wah would have been a da'wah of building trust before he made the call. What does this mean? We know the famous story when he was on the mount. Yes. And he said, if there was an army behind me, would you believe me? They said, yes, of course, you're the trustworthy. Yes. This shows the establishment of trust between himself and the Arabs in Mecca. So true. So he was saying, I'm an authority concerning trust. I'm someone that you believe in. I'm someone that As you trust al -Ameen. in. Exactly. Already. And then he said, Fear the nar, fear the fire. Don't worship yourselves, your ego. Don't worship creation, but worship the one that created you. Now, some people use this as evidence to say, yes, we can stand in the public sphere and say, oh people, oh people, listen to me. But, but who, who are you compared to the exactly. Prophet? Exactly. So, the Prophet, so the revelation came to him at the age of 40. Yes. He had 40 years to already develop as Sadiq al Amin. Agreed. But we shouldn't fall for the trap and say, oh, I have to be extremely trustworthy before I give any doubt. Right, right. So it's a unique balance. What it means is, at the same time when you're making the call, be the call. Don't be a human doing, be a human being. being. Be that which you believe in. So we know we have to be trustworthy individuals. We have to be people that people look up to us. Honest people. Honest, caring, compassionate. We need to raise the moral bar now. Because we have to show how profound our tradition is. Yes. Like, take the rights of the neighbors. It is a neglected practice in our society. Before you move on, I'm the biggest ah, hypocrite. I'm yeah. the biggest hypocrite on this, so continue. No, we all are. We all are. Yeah. So, from that perspective, we suspend the rights of the neighbors. And the rights of the neighbors include Muslim and non-Muslim, to the point where the Prophet wasallam, he thought that the angel Gabriel would have legislated, <laughs> right, that we have to give some of our inheritance, inheritance. to the neighbors. And if you read the works of Al Ghazali and many others, they wrote manuals on rights of neighbors. And this includes psychological state, emotive state, physical state. For example, if you see your next door neighbor, say he is Joe Bloggs, and he walks to work, he's, you haven't seen his wife for a few months, he's growing his stubble, his ties all over the place, he's got lots of beer cans, and that's a change in his character. You have a level of responsibility to inquire if everything's all right. What happened? What can I do? How can I take care of your social, psychological and physical needs? Wow. Do you know what's actually scary is there's been a recent epidemic in, I'm not sure if it's only in Australia, but there's been cases whereby <laughs> neighbours have died. Wow. And people don't know until six days later because of the smell that comes out of the house. <laughs> so this teaching that the Prophet wasallam is ever more so necessary today as it was 1400 years ago. So truly, it is important. We live in a fragmented and individualistic society now. And so the teachings of the Prophet teach us not to be fragmented as a society and not to be individualistic, thinking about me, myself and I, I'm all right, yeah, Jack. Love for your brother, what you love for yourself. But that's interesting because the love for your brother here, according to the ulama, like Imam Rajab al Hanbali and others, that this means human. It means human too. Regard Muslim, non-Muslim. Yes, human beings, insaniya, people in general. So if we want to love for others, we love for ourselves, then we must take care of our fellow human beings. Obviously, primarily, this means that we should give them da'wah because that's the greatest form of love we have, love of Allah and love of the Messenger. But being good to your neighbor is a mechanism towards that, do you see? It starts off in the community, then it goes global. Of course. And that's the obligation of Well, it goes to show that we have to be trustworthy. Not only trustworthy, but follow a prophetic character. The Prophet ﷺ was the most compassionate He man. was 
He was the walking Quran, as Aisha taught. So I'll, whatever he course, acted was in the Quran, in yeah, God's yeah. scripture. And he was the most compassionate person. He would say to Aisha, Oh Aisha, be compassionate. When there is compassion in something, it elevates it. When it's removed from, from something, it degrades it. Makes it, it. ugly. Makes it ugly. Yeah, that's right. And this shows that we have a compassionate tradition, but sometimes when we look at each other, it looks like there's no rahmah, there's no that, compassion I, left. Oh, <laughs> that is like, subhanAllah, there's, there's a beautiful dua in the Quran where Allah says, you know, the, the meaning the believers, they say, oh, oh God, do not put hatred in our hearts between those of the believers, because it's so important that we should love one another. Yeah, of course. And that's what stems on to loving the rest of humanity. And there was no one better than that than the Prophet, peace be upon him. Well, the Prophet sallallahu said in a hadith that you will not enter paradise until you believe and you won't believe until you love one another. And also concerning compassion, the Prophet sallallahu said that if you're not compassionate to the creatures on the earth, then the one who's in the heavens won't be compassionate to you, won't show mercy to you. Be mercy to people, and that includes Muslims and non-Muslims, Allah will show you mercy. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, what, did, what does God call him in, in the Quran? Rahmatan lil alameen. And if we, a mercy to alameen. And what is alameen? Everything except Allah, which yes. means everything that exists, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was a mercy to it. So I think mercy, compassion, gentleness, these go hand in hand with the message of Islam. This is da'wah. Combine the two, and inshallah, the da'wah will be easy. Well, let's end on this. The Quran speaks to the Prophet and says, if you were not soft-hearted with them, meaning the companions, they would have run away from you. This means that being soft-hearted and compassionate is a mechanism for allowing people to flock towards you, not for them to run away. Wow, that's so beautiful. Jazakallah khairan. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah.